going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i am going to be talking about the jethro tall vinyl reissues what can be said about jethro tall they are one of the most important progressive rock bands ever they had their humble beginnings as a band that was more so in the jazz fusion and blues vein and worked in elements of hard rock and folk to forge ahead a progressive rock type of sound and what makes this band so distinguished is their charismatic vocalist ian anderson who aside from being a multi-instrumentalist he was rock's first flute player his distinctive pose of playing the flute while standing on one leg is one of the most iconic stage antics ever and adds to the progressive rock ideology. While Ian is keeping the Jethro Tall flag flying high to this day with a revolving cast of band members, Ian's significance in being the band's sole songwriter and frontman doesn't diminish the contributions of other members that have come and gone, such as guitarist of 44 years Martin Bure, keyboardist John Evan, orchestral arranger and keyboardist Dee Palmer, formerly known as David, bassist John Glasscock, drummer Barry Moore Barlow, and a whole slew of others. So enough of the chit chat, let's jump into what this video is all about. For the past 10 plus years, Chrysalis has been reissuing the Jethro Tall Studio Catalog in these nice book style deluxe editions, as well as digipack sometimes, uh, to coincide with an album's 40th anniversary on any given year. These sets include uh, the album Remixed in Stereo by Stephen Wilson, various alternate takes or unreleased studio material, and a live show from the album cycle on CD. And then we also have on DVD uh, surround sound mixes of the album and the studio and live material, as well as video content such as promo films and live material. And then you get a book that has all kinds of photos and liner notes uh, talking about the making of the album and the resulting tour. There's a track by track and analysis by Ian Anderson. Uh, you get other recollections of other band members and people involved at the time. Now, vinyl aside, if you want to see how a deluxe edition should be done, this is a prime example. Labels and artists should follow the Jethro Tull formula if they intend to re-release their catalog. Fans are getting what they deserve with these releases, and with the amount of extra material that is given along with the book and the amount of attention to detail that's given to these releases, surely show it's not some slapdash you know, job done by the label. This is the real deal. And even if you're not a Tall fan, you can certainly appreciate what is involved with these releases. And the amazing thing is, they don't cost out the wazoo. These sets usually go for around 40 to 50 bucks. So with everything that you are getting, it's absolute bank for the buck. Now, even though I say that, you must act fast with these releases since some of them are going out of print and command up to $200. But if there is a Tall album that you love that got this deluxe edition treatment, you owe it to yourself as it is a fan's ultimate dream. And uh, certainly, as you can see, I am a huge fan with these deluxe editions. They're just absolutely fun to collect and just an absolutely fantastic release altogether. Now, aside from the deluxe editions, it was also a prime time to reissue the titles they did deluxe editions for, for the vinyl buying market. Now, the vinyl reissues usually came out a few months after the deluxe editions, along with condensed CD-only versions, so we basically got one album reissued for every year. So far, we got This Was, Stand Up, Benefit, Aqualung, Thick as a Brick, A Passion Play, War Child, Minstrel in the Gallery, Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die, My Personal Favorite, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, and last but not least, Stormwatch. Of course, the source audio for these reissues are indeed the Stephen Wilson remixes that are featured in the deluxe editions. So these aren't analog reissues, but I really do like what Stephen Wilson does with his remixes of classic albums by various artists that he has worked for, whether it's King Crimson, Yes, or Jethro Tull. He doesn't take any liberties with the original mix, and if anything, he adds a bit more depth to the recording overall. Now, I should mention that This Was was remixed in 2008 for its 40th anniversary by Peter Mew and a vinyl release was made of it back in 2014 
but Stephen Wilson gave it another crack in 2018 for its 50th anniversary. As for Stand Up, it was re-released in uh, 2010 for its 40th anniversary, but the multi-tracks weren't located, so they simply included a 2001 remaster of the original mix with no surround sound mix. And then in 2016, the multi-tracks were located, and Stephen Wilson gave it a remix, and it was released as the Elevated Edition. And for Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die, Stephen Wilson remixed the re-recorded version of the album. So the backstory is they did a television special where they played the whole album in its entirety, but due to the regulations of the Musicians Union, they couldn't simply mime to the album tracks, so they went in the studio to re-record the album for the purpose of the TV special. Now, coincidentally, some of the multi-tracks for the original album were missing, so now this TV special is pretty much the default version of the album, but whatever Stephen Wilson was able to remix from the original album multi-tracks were included as bonus cuts on the deluxe editions. These reissues were pressed at Optimal in Germany, and chances are they were mastered by in-house mastering engineers at Optimal since there are no dead wax indicators. Now, let's talk about the packaging. All aspects of the original album artwork are perfectly replicated for the most part. I say that because for Thick as a Brick, the fold-out newspaper cover isn't fully replicated. It just comes in a standard cover. But to make up for that, we have the classic pop-up gatefold for stand-up. I think a reissue of this particular album would be rubbish if it wasn't included. As well as a pretty cool live shot to the gatefold of a passion play which was not featured with the original album along with a live shot for the printed inner sleeve uh, for benefit and then to kick it up to the next level uh, each album comes with a booklet which is adapted from the deluxe edition book which has the backstory of the album a track by track analysis along with a bunch of photos this is something you can just simply flip through as you listen to the album and get more engulfed in the whole experience and I should mention that the newspaper artwork for Thick as a Brick is worked into the booklet for the first couple pages, as you see here, along with the theater program that was included with A Passion Play. It comes featured right here. Now, the records do come stored for the most part in these nice polyline sleeves, with the rare exception where a printed inner sleeve would be included to match up with the original artwork, such as the lyric inner sleeves for War Child and Heavy Horses. And all of the center labels are perfectly replicated based on when the albums came out. So we have the uh, pink island label right there. We have the classic green chrysalis label as well as the blue chrysalis label. So while editing, I forgot to mention that Passion Play comes with a nice new custom label of the album cover. Now these reissues go for an average price tag of $20, and considering that you are getting a faithful remix of the album that sounds fantastic on vinyl and the addition of the booklet, it's absolute value for your money and it's well worth the investment. Jacob over at Rockley Records compared the Stephen Wilson remix pressing of Aqualong to the classic records pressing, which is all analog and uses the original mix. And he thought that the remix outshone the classic records pressing. Now, granted, two entirely different entities in regards to the mix, but it goes to show that even though these are digital records, they can truly sound good. And it's just down to how well an album is engineered and how well mastered is the pressing. Overall, I think these reissues are absolutely fantastic and are great ways to get some new Jethro Tull vinyl for your vinyl collection. Aside from the Stephen Wilson remixes on vinyl, we have seen some other notable recent Jethro Tull vinyl releases. One album that gets a lot of love is Aqualung, and back in 2007, Classic Records did a pressing on 200 gram Quiex Super Vinyl, Master from Analog Sources by Chris Bellman, and the one pressing that all of the super uber audiophiles can drool over is the Classic Records pressing from 2009, which came in the form of a box set on four single-sided 45 RPM records pressed on Clarity Vinyl. Word on the street is Aqualung is going to be the next release in Analog Productions UHQR series, and I have to say, I may look into it when it comes out.
In 2016, we saw a reissue of the Living in the Past compilation, a great collection of singles, B-sides, EP tracks, as well as other studio and live material. This reissue mimics the American version, which has a different track list from the UK version, and it also comes with a very nice booklet of photos taken from the original release. And uh, Jethro Tull has also unleashed a bunch of various Record Store Day releases over the years. In 2013, we got a Living in the Past EP with various remixes and other single tracks. For Black Friday that year, we saw a reissue of the American version of Benefit, which has an alternate track list. Then in 2015, we got this. Live at Carnegie Hall 1970, some of the tracks appeared on Living in the Past, and the show was released in the 25th anniversary box set and remixed for the 40th anniversary edition of Stand Up, and this is the first time that the show has been made available on vinyl in its entirety. An absolutely killer show. Then in 2016, we got Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die, so that album was solely re-released for Record Store Day, and then for Black Friday that year, we got a rejiggered version of the Ring Out Solstice Bell single, which includes remixes and other songs. And then we got some 10-inch versions of singles that came out back in the day, which feature material from the deluxe editions. So first in 2018, we got Moths from Heavy Horses. And then we got North Sea Oil from Stormwatch. And then this year in 2020, we got a 12-inch release called Stormwatch 2, which brings together even more material from the deluxe anniversary set. In terms of the future with these deluxe editions and Von issues, I really do hope that they make it a point to deliver the entire studio catalog in this fashion. A series as grand and packed to the gills deserves to be rounded off at some point, but there is one album we have not seen a remix or re-release of, and that is the live album Bursting Out. And this may prove to be a challenge because multiple shows were recorded for this album, one of them being in Bern within Switzerland, which was indeed remixed and included with the deluxe edition of Heavy Horses. However, this was the only show that was recorded on 24 track and the rest of the stuff was done on 8 track. So going about remixing that particular album on the same scale as the studio albums would be impossible. But it is still possible to get a standard reissue of the original mix, just like they did with Living in the Past. Or perhaps we will see vinyl releases of the live material that's featured within these sets. There are full-length concerts and BBC recordings, and they can make for some great Record Store Day releases or limited mainstream releases. We shall see what the future holds, but I am sure whatever comes our way, it's going to be of amazing quality. So there you guys go. That is my video about the Jethro Tull vinyl reissues. What do you guys think of these vinyl reissues? Please drop a comment down below. I'd love to know. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.